Hello and welcome to another Battle Games in Middle Earth painting tutorial. In a bit of a festive edition, I'm painting Barlin from Thorin's Company in a suspiciously Santa like getup. Paints I use are in the description below. Have a look at that list, check it twice, and let's get painting. The scheme is basically stolen from SBG Magazine's free advent calendar from last year, so if you just search the Great British Hobbit League Facebook page, uh, you'll be able to find the actual painting tutorial, but I'll dumb it down a little bit for you here. Starting with a three-way equal mix, really dumbing it down, of Doombull Brown, Rhinox Hide and Mephiston Red, we start carefully layering the whole of Barlin's coat, leaving enough dark in the recesses to show through. To be honest, you could easily do this in just Doomball Brown, but to be honest, this does work very nicely. You get a lot of good coverage off it, so stick with it. Right, next then, I present or present you with a wash of Devlan Mud or Agrax Earthshade. Gives it an early richness to the palette here. You wait for that to dry, then let's bring that richness straight back into a beautiful red to make Rudolph proud with some Evil Sun's Scarlet. The guide from SBG suggests using an intermediary step here, which, because I was reading it on a tablet, I accidentally missed, but actually it works well without it. I only noticed it after when I'd finished. So just simply paint in red in the inner sections of his coat, and we're just leaving the trim in the browny red, but really, really brightening up the rest. It looks very Santa-y already. Now we're going to keep deepening that red by washing everything again in Caraberg Crimson, the red wash. Now let it dry normally, for God's sake, I rushed it, and in a slightly drunken state, I decided to speed it up a little bit by dangling it over a candle. Don't do that. It turns out it melts swords out of shape. Fool of a took. Yeah, I'm sure there's some fancy gadget out there that will dry miniatures quickly, but I'm afraid I don't have the son of Fundin funding for that. See what I did there. Anyway, we move on to some fancy pants decoration. It's kind of freehand work this, but pretty straightforward stuff. Making sure you've got a decent point on your brush, now that is essential. Paint diagonal lines on the sleeves faintly to start with, and then build them up until you have a tasty looking diamond pattern. Don't be put off by this step, it, it, it's surprisingly not as hard as it looks, so just give it a go, draw on some faint lines, you can even do them in a bit of pencil or something like that first, then go straight into it with a very fine black brush and it looks amazing. Next onto the highlights, orange you glad you got this far and are rewarded with a mix of squig orange and evil sun scarlet, basically 50-50 of each of those and dot into each of these diamonds, just make them really really nice and small dots to highlight those diamonds, it really makes the jacket pop. Luckily the model is way better than I'd expected, the detail really keeps barling you out and making it easy. See what I did there. Now, we're already on to the trimmings. No, we're not talking potatoes, boiled or mashed, but the edges of the jacket. So mix up Ushabti Bone and Doombull Brown with only about one drop of Ushabti for every three of the Doombull. And with that mix, you carefully edge highlight the trimmings. It helps if this is very watered down so it doesn't look too sharp. Essentially, these are meant to be cracks in the leather rather than sort of any kind of light catching it or anything like that. Now, with a mix of mostly Dawnstone, but with a little bit of Administratum Grey, I start on the hair. Santa, I mean Barlin, has very white hair, so we'll build it up from a relatively light grey base. But mixing the two does give it a bit of lightness, but also helps with that coverage over a dark base coat. Now to that hardy dwarven face stained by working the forges, or is it from going down chimneys? Either way, I painted in Cadian flesh tone, with a slightly watered down mix to make it fairly th thin and almost translucent. Not too thick a coverage. Also, don't forget to paint his hands here as well. Back to dirty that face up with Agrax Earthshade again. Logically, I'd have done all this when I washed it earlier, but we're following a written tutorial from SBG Magazine here, and it looks so good, so who's complaining? You are? Well, shush, stop your complaining. 
With lead belcher, I paint the now slightly warped sword. It really makes me sad that I melted this, to be honest. I mean, it's not bad enough to be noticeable, really, but I'll know, and I hate life now because of it. But anyway, with Cadian Flesh Tone, I now go back to the face now the wash has dried, and I pick out the forehead, cheeks, and basically other painty, pointy facial features. A lot of these are fiddly details, but with the right brush care, you can keep that point on your brush, and all you need is then a steady hand and some patience. This model took about three and a half hours to do it, and it was very late with a whiskey in hand, and to be honest, it's amazing it came out as well as it did really, except the melting incident, of course. Now, with a dash of ironbreaker, I sharpened that bulbous melted sword. Then with Rhinox Hide, I start work on the boots. Usually I barely touch these things, but here the trousers are black, so I think I needed the boots to be something else. Then with Storm Vermin Fur, fast becoming one of my favourite paints, I must say, I highlight the black base coat on the trouser legs. I'm not putting loads of effort into these bits, to be honest, because your eye is naturally drawn upwards, and on a tabletop, you're looking from above, so you can't even really see the legs. But rather than a basic black, a little dark grey helps make it look a bit less than just plain and unpainted. To highlight the boots, I use a very, very rough layer of Bane Blade Brown. In fact, it was probably a bit too rough, really. By this point, it was getting very late at night indeed. So close, Barlin himself was practically down the chimney and under the tree. Back to that facial fuzz now. So with another layer of Administratum Grey, I highlight that as carefully as possible. You could probably dry brush this, but having the individual strands flowing in the right direction felt like it was worth the extra time and effort. With Nolna Oil, I remedy some of the roughness of the boots by just obscuring the Bane Braid Brown highlight and muting it all down to a mucky dark brown. Good old washes help hide mistakes. Now being super careful with that point, I dot the eyes in white and then highlight the beard and hair once more to a final white so bright even Bing Crosby himself would be dazzled by its festivity. With extra super duper care, dot in the eyes with black. And I also retouched the eyebrows here in white. Uh, the general rule with models is don't bother with eyebrows, unless they're bushy monstrosities. And here they definitely fit that bill. Finally, with a mix of a tiny amount of red and flesh tone, just give him those rosy cheeks Santa is famous for. And voila! Santa, son of Father Christmas, I suppose? Lord of, I don't know, the North Pole. Anyway, Balin, son of Fundin, Lord of Moria there. The base is just done with a bit of a dry brush on the black and a few patches of bicarbonate soda mixed with PVA glue for some snow. Anyway, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to support me on patreon.com slash battlegamesinmiddleearth and listen to Entmoot Podcast. Another podcast should be on the way before 2020 ends. Merry Christmas and thanks for watching.